about the Finnish Center for Artificial Intelligence, but I thought to start from the important issue of, of Europe and competitiveness in, in AI. So Europe is actually really strong in fundamental research in machine learning and artificial intelligence. But this hasn't been equally visible as in Northern America, maybe in, in China. And additionally, Europe has appeared a bit scattered, which is, of course, at the same time, it's a strength and it's a weakness. But anyway, to be, uh, fix this uh, visibility issue, we would need to play on the strengths to make Europe more attractive on research and, and in getting also additional power to the applications Becca was talking about. For that, we will need a set of strong hubs that are connected by actual collaboration, both within the academic research and, and with industry. And this is where ELLIS, the European Laboratory for Learning and Intelligence Systems, emerged as a bottom-up initiative, uh, being an excellence-driven initiative, uh, which means either current or future excellence, aim at excellence, uh, based on actual work and collaboration. So it is running research programs, PhD programs, mobility programs. For instance, those of you who might be uh, thinking of applying for a PhD position in Europe, there is an endless call for PhD students open now with the deadline in the beginning of December. Still time to apply. Ellis has a set of units. Uh, and one of the first ones out of the roughly 30 that there are now is in Finland. Ellis unit Helsinki. Now what's in it for you? For researchers, Ellis is open. But it's excellence-based, so everybody needs to be evaluated, but everybody can apply. For companies, collaboration, for Finland, Finnish society, we already have this unit uh, hosted by the Finnish Center for Artificial Intelligence. But maybe I dare suggest that Ellis is discussing of institutes, which would be bigger units than these more or less bottom-up units that it has now. And it might be a really good move for Finland to establish maybe the first Ellis Institute or one of the first, uh, something worth considering for, for us Finns. So Ellis Unit Helsinki is hosted by the Finnish Institute for Artificial Intelligence, which is the Academy of Finland's uh, flagship of research in this field out of the six uh, ones. Now, now a couple of, a few new, new have been established. Uh, FKI brings to the Ellis Unit Helsinki the company collaboration, broader connects to the society and, and to the broader research landscape within Finland. So at the moment in FKI, there is already 60 professors actively working uh, towards the FKI mission together with, 60, uh, with, with 20 uh, company partners. So doing research together towards this mission within the ecosystem of several hundred companies who want to be involved. And now I'm emphasizing this because, as, as we know, uh, sometimes media coverage can be a bit narrow and it may not be known to all that there actually is this critical mass of AI, excellent AI research in Finland, which is a big asset, asset for, for the companies operating here or wanting to operate here. So the media coverage can somehow, sometimes be narrow so everybody, now if we were physically present, I would ask everybody to raise hands if they know Tem Roos, for instance, who is well known for the very, very uh, nice achievement of the elements of AI. I would ask how many have actually taken this course, and I, I guess many would. Uh, now, then I would be asking that how many actually know something about Temu's research? So he's an excellent researcher as well. And then, Maybe now you have seen me, so you know two AI professors from Finland. Then I would ask how many out of the 58 others uh, do you know? So now is a good time, a good chance to get to know the rest today in, in this FKI day. So what does FKI do? Uh, we have two uh, modest goals. One is, is to help the humanity and society uh, 
which is facing the severe challenges now that we all are all too familiar with due to the pandemic. But of course, there are some other small issues such as climate change still waiting to be solved. Uh, we don't have the hubris that we would be able to solve everything, but I believe that we need new kinds of solutions also on the AI front for to help us humans solve these problems. This is the first part of FKI's mission. And the other part is to renew the Finnish industry and society with these new tools so actually help solve these problems, not only develop AIs, even though the, developing the AIs is, 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 is uh, one main goal. So all self-respecting entities need to have a slogan and, and ours is on the right. So we develop real AIs, uh, meaning really intelligent AIs. Instead, AI stands for artificial intelligence as we know, but many of the AI solutions feel more like artificial stupidity. So we'd like to have AIs that are actually useful so that they are not harmful because they are not useful and they are sucking our time, but also they are not harmful in the sense that we, we need to really apply them properly, so ethically. These need to work with real people. So we are seeking to augment people, not to replace people. And for that, these solutions need to be understandable and trustworthy to people. And they also need to solve real world problems, given the data that we have instead of the data that we wish we had. So for many problems, we have a lack of a high quality data and still we would want to proceed in solving these problems. For that, we need data efficient solutions. So and on the borders of, of this uh, glyph there, you can see the three scientific missions that we have of objectives, understandability, trustworthiness, ethicality and, and data efficiency. So how do we then do this? And, and what is unique in, in what FKI does? Because many other centers uh, would have some of these aspects in there. I, I, I would argue that very few actually have the same combination which we believe is needed in order to make big advances. But we additionally have a core thought which we are focusing on heavily, which distinguishes us from others. Uh, this starts from what I already said, that augmenting people instead of replacing them. So now when we are thinking of, of the big set of issues where humans would need help, AI assistance for decision making, design and modeling. So in, in the core, there is always the designer or decision maker, user in this slide, who would make a design change, a change in the world or, or, or a decision would like to know what would be the impacts of this decision if I run a what if scenario on the decision. So now we are thinking of design very broadly here. It can be design of a new vaccine. It would be design of a new drug, a new material uh, useful, for instance, for energy production or user interface. For decision making, it can be a doctor deciding which treatment uh, to prescribe to a, a patient, or it could be something bigger. So how could the government best contain uh, a pandemic or what interventions would be more eff most efficient uh, for tackling the climate change. So uh, now these are difficult problems, all of these, uh, and we wouldn't immediately know what the outcome will be. If we would, then, then of course everything would be easy. Instead, we might want to try out in a simulation, if we have a simulation, if not, we need to do an experimental design and, and do pilot studies in order to collect more data, in order to improve the designs uh, or decisions iteratively. And this is the process where humans are needed and where we want to have humans instead of replace them by automatic uh, decision makers. But we would certainly want help in here whatever help we can get in making better decisions and designs. So now what is the AI design challenge when we are developing and designing the AIs? What is the challenge here? So the AIs will be able to observe the outcomes of the simulations or the interventions and feedback of the users on these outcomes. And additionally, they will have some additional data on which to build models. Now, we are not only doing what most AI researchers are doing at the moment, which would be to develop models of the world 
based on the data and what is known of the world in order to optimize the decisions or designs uh, for the world. Instead, we would like to have the human in the loop, augment the human instead of replacing. But I, uh, if we would just have the world model and optimize, we would have automated, automated the decision making and replace the humans. Now, what we would like to have is the optimal assistant. Optimal in the sense that the AI would be maximally useful for the user. So what is needed for this? So the AI will need to have the world model of the world, but additionally, it needs to have a model of the user so that it can decide its recommendations to be understandable to this particular human and useful in whatever decision the user, the human is now making. And for that, so it needs to have a joint model of the user and the world and then design its interventions, recommendations, visualizations, whatever its actions are, such that they are useful for the user. And this is the core problem we are addressing. After we have made progress in this, uh, this opens up lots of different directions in which to apply this in order to improve decision making, design and modeling. FKI does uh, of course, many things around this core. So in order to make this really useful in practice, we of course need to have lots of other things too. But this is the core that I believe very few others are focusing on equally as, as we are. So when we launched the FKI roughly two years ago, we set out to building a world-class research community with an attractive joint mission and top international partners for researchers and for industry and society, access to cutting edge research, results and expertise and an, and, and an ecosystem in which to work with the, uh, with the researchers. And this, I believe we actually have already now achieved. So this is a big achievement. So uh, warm congratulations to everybody who have contributed. What is going on now is you'll get a glimpse in this, uh, in this AI day to many of the specific research results. Here are a few spearhead ongoing research projects, starting from generating synthetic data that has the same properties, crucial properties as an original data set, but which protects the privacy of any individuals who contributed data to this set, which, which is really useful in the case where, where the data is scarce, such as in the beginning of pandemic. Everybody had too little data to actually design treatments, understand the uh, disease better, if people would have been able to share their data, uh, the progress would have been faster. But it, there obviously we need to make a trade-off between privacy and, and progress uh, towards treatments. And now with this synthetic data, we don't need to worry about that particular trade-off. Uh, personalized medicine, a big project uh, bringing in uh, data across Europe in developing new kinds of genomics-based personalized medicine solutions. Uh, materials research, interactive AI for driving research and uh, development in, in industry. Uh, this was technology industries and ERCO Foundation project. Very warm thanks for their pioneering insights in funding us before the FKI was launched. This was actually a kickstart of the FKI. Uh, a couple of other examples here, uh, recent startups emerging. Maybe the last one worth mentioning particularly. Uh, this is the, the new strategic research council project looking at use of data from health to social services end to end. So what is the future in, at FKI and how to contribute? FKI is running 12 uh, bleeding edge research programs from probabilistic agile AI, uh, data efficient deep learning, interactive AI that contribute to, together and to solve uh, the scientific challenges I mentioned in the beginning. A set of highlight application uh, programs, for instance, in atmospheric research, materials research, health, uh, showing what can be done with these new techniques. A community of bottom-up special interest groups, uh, more are welcome, events such as this one, and collaboration across different disciplines. Uh, for the industry, uh, we are, have started uh, putting up uh, big initiatives where we believe we can make a big difference. Uh, starting with three ones on synthetic biology, materials design, engineering design. Contact us if, if you want to be involved. 
we are very open for new suggestions, also other types of suggestions. Of course, uh, having to be very conscious, as, as everybody, that the total challenge is so big that we need to focus. So in some cases, some other partners may be better for what you are uh, looking for. That's very unlikely. The probability is very small, but sometimes we need to say no. But we are very open to good suggestions on other topics. Then maybe towards uh, the uh, society. So we believe that AI is one of the strongest ad assets that Finland and Europe more broadly have. And we are doing the very best we can to make sure that we have the expertise, attractiveness to launch big initiatives on this. So we are hoping that, that F Finland really will build on this and will help make this even stronger it is now. In this field, the biggest mistake we could do is, is to look at this, see that this was a success. Okay, what will we do next? This will vanish quickly unless we work hard on this. And I'm very glad that we have an excellent team working on this. Thanks. This was my turn.